At its height, the Bloc Québécois had 54 seats in Parliament and served as the party of official opposition. That was back in the 90s. The Bloc has since kind of crumbled, beginning in 2011 when its seats were reduced from 47 to 4. There has been a rotating door of leaders since, none able to regain official party status. But a former Quebec cabinet minister is the latest to rise to the challenge. Yves-Francois Blanchet is the new leader of the Bloc Québécois, and he joins us now. Hi, Mr. Blanchet. Nice to see you. Hi. It's thank a pleasure you, to be here. Thank you very much for making time for us. I appreciate it. Uh, the Bloc, as, as I'm sure you're well aware, has gone through a lot in the last few years. Uh, a series of leaders. The poll numbers are below where they were in the 2015 election. Not an official party anymore. Why did you want to lead the Bloc? I, I think it's a mix between two things. The first one is that as a militant, militant mm -hmm. as, an, as, a, as former members, because when I was in the media, I was not a member of any party, of course. But I did not want the Bloc Québécois to fall to one, two, or no MP at all. And then the adversaries of the idea of uh, sovereignty would have said once again, but with more credibility this time, that the bloc was dead and that the idea of independence was also dead. And I said, this must not happen. And I would guess that maybe there was some politics left in the guy that wanted to come out. So uh, the period of uh, reflection, of thinking about it, was short, very intense. And I just decided to jump into it. Why do you think the idea of independence is not dead? And why do you think focusing on it will be a winning strategy? It does not have to be a strategy. When you believe something is good, as a politician, your responsibility is to propose it, is to tell about it, is to present this as an offer to the population, that will make its own decision. And I also believe that the idea for a nation, for a people to have its own country, cannot die and cannot be irrelevant. It's been chosen by so many people in the last century. Why would any of that be any bad for Quebec? Which does not mean in my mind, and I have never been one of those who try to build the idea of sovereignty uh, through a, through a uh, aidful narrative. I believe that our main partner is and will remain Canada. But we might make our own choices and we might sit at the table as two equal people and nations writing a very different deal between themselves, but that would have to serve the best interests of both nations and countries. Do you feel, though, that the support for what you describe exists in Quebec? And I have to, and I know that th that's what your party stands for, but I have to ask because, you know, I know of a survey done in October uh, that showed a full 82% of Quebec respondents, this is an Angus Reid survey in partnership with CBC, agreed with the statement, ultimately, Quebec should stay in Canada. 73% of Francophone respondents said Quebec should remain in Canada as well. Do you feel like there There's is an There's been appetite? many polls about that issue for many years, and I would understand it in, if in the last year or two, the results, the support for the idea might have become a little more cold because we were not good. Those who carried this idea were not good. We were turned toward ourselves, trying to heal some injuries from the past, from 2011, 2015. But most of the time, if a survey is done, we almost always get to a result between 30 and 35 percent of the Quebecers who favor the idea of sovereignty. And this is more than enough to keep this idea alive and to build on. And I, I, I still believe that this can be done, this can be achieved. When Monsieur Parizeau took the lead of the Parti Québécois in 1987, the support for both Parti Québécois and sovereignty were very low. 
and he did build it back up to the almost 50% in 1995. So, and another thing, in Quebec, on the 1st of October, about around 25% of the people voted for the Parti Libéral. And about 33% of the same persons support sovereignty. Does anybody say that the Liberals are dead in Quebec? The Conservatives in Quebec do gather about 20% of support. Do anybody say that the Conservatives are dead in Quebec because they are far behind sovereignty? I think an idea lives by itself. Our job is to discuss it peacefully in the best interest of everybody involved. Let me ask you about some of your policy stands, uh, mm -hmm. standpoints. Specifically, you, you have a background, obviously, in the environment. You served as environment minister provincially. Uh, there is a lot of um, a anger, I guess you could say, even coming from the West towards Quebec and, and, um, and the expression of the premier around the Energy East pipeline or uh, calling oil dirty oil. What is your position on Energy East? I would like for things to be simple enough I would say that Western Canada has its own vision of energy and economic development, and we have our own. Let's do your thing, and we will do our thing. What does that mean? That means that we would not go into financing four billion Quebec dollars into that weird idea of going on this You know, this idea of having people buying more and more and burning more and more oil, which will bring the whole planet nowhere. And it cannot be that simple because as a nation, like any other nation, we have to put a lot of pressure on any country that keeps doing that. We are killing this world faster than we thought. Quebecers so when, are involved in that too, though. Sales of uh, trucks, SUVs, and pickups in Quebec. That is true. And I never said, and I never said that Quebecers were saints. I never said that. We used but you said they can do their thing, too, we can do ours. Yeah, the, as uh, a, a, a model for economic development and a model for energy strategies. And I admit easily, and I want all of them to say, to see that I admit easily that we buy far too many of those SUVs. Some people need those pickups in Abitibi or Saguenay-Lac-Saint-Jean, and that's something else entirely. We use far too much fresh water for our needs. We are the most, if, or, or one of the most important garbage producers on the planet. We have a lot of things to improve which does not mean that to have to be forced into being accomplice to this toxic development of tar sand oil in Western Canada uh, with this idea of selling it in Asia, which does not want it so far. Uh, well, what's toxic about it though? Would you rather get it from somewhere else? I mean, Quebec I would rather the oil. have a strategy as a Canada should have it, Quebec should have it, any country should have a strategy saying, okay, we have to limit our consumption of oil between today and let's say 2040 to that amount of oil. And we have to reduce our consumption on a yearly basis in order to achieve that goal. If we do not, we will pay a price for... But isn't that sort of what putting a price on pollution is doing? Like Alberta does have a carbon tax. If a tax is so low that it has no effect What's the point of doing it if not putting out a show? Do you think that's what the federal liberals are doing? With their uh, worse, tax? worse than that. What the liberals are doing now is uh, imposing a tax in some provinces, taking the money and returning it as checks to the middle class families of Canada. Isn't that cute? But the fact is that it does provide Canadian government with no new tool to fight climate change. And Won't it during, during, they do that, during the time that they do that, they take money from all those middle class Canadian families and send it to support the exportation of oil from Western Canada. How are they taking the money and doing that? They're giving it That's back to people in the provinces they're applying the tax to. Two things. First, this tax is perceived in some provinces and they are returning it. That's one thing. 
So it means that they do not keep, like, like we do in Quebec, we keep the money. We could do better uh, uh, about our choices, uh, about the way we spend that money. That's something else. But we keep the money in order to fight climate change. When uh, liberals do return the money to those families and keeps nothing to fight nothing. So it's simply well, they have put receiving a lot, But a they tax. have put other money into that. Okay, so the money they put into that comes from every Canadian. And the money that they put into, on another field, that they put into developing oil in Western Canada also comes from each and every Canadian. I have invested money in this Trans Mountain pipeline. And if we add those investments made by federal government in that industry, it will amount to close to $20 billion. But the federal government has also invested in the aerospace industry, for example, and they take Albertans' there's money nothing, and invest in Bombardier. There's Bombard nothing Jet. comparable between the money the federal government has invested in oil and has invested in aerospace industry. No possible comparison. And if the federal wants, uh, wants to put a lot of money in some energy strategy, you should ask Quebec what we think about it. And I'm pretty sure that we would say that we want to keep that money and instead invest money in the exportation of our electricity surplus eastward, uh, westward. That would be good politics. Okay, I have to leave it there. I'm out of time, unfortunately, but thank you very much. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs>